Okay, well it's Sunday and it's Sierra Hotel One Tango set Sunday. So we've got our Sierra Hotel One Tango mug. And today, what's the one? It's an Academy 701, isn't it? 501, 701 on the picture on the mug. And this is the Chizer 701. So there you go. This has come from our kind mystery benefactor, Alan. And it's got the Chizer mic. And you know what? I don't expect there's anything wrong with this. It's got a nice power lead. It's even got banana plugs on it. So we'll plug this into our power supply. I think he's had this in everyday use, to be honest. So as I said before, these are, the chassis is a, Three and a half watt chassis, then we did get four watts out of Fidelity Thousand last week. I've got another couple of Fidelity Thousands, I keep buying them. Right, we'll plug the test gear in. So being at the bottom end of the range, it doesn't even have an extension speaker socket. That's nice and frustrating to plug the test equipment in. There was a blanking label on with the serial number or something like that uh, when these were new. But it's like people peel that label off to see what the holes are underneath. Well, the holes are, of course, what would be an extension speaker socket on a higher level model. And on the GT868 with the four knobs, you've also got the PA. So, we will open it up. I'm only expecting this to be a retune. Probably be done in 20 minutes. Here we did the Thunderpole 3000 yesterday. And I've no doubt this will be a bit of a contrast in received clarity but you know what the transmitted audio on these is second to none I might take the filter out of this mic and put it through the washing machine along with my socks so it's got the great branded speaker there's no distressed looking capacitors so it doesn't look like it's been over vaulted can't see any burning on that resistor which can play up when things happen so it all looks genuine and, and nice we've got the screening plate in in position may have to pop that off if it's slightly off frequency I've only just put the test gear on so we'll come back to the frequency at least half an hour later if not more so if I can just find my pen we've got no serial number on this I'm doing it, it's Chizer and of course there's a 702 which is the 4 knob version um, I think it's the 12th today That'd be the 11th, really doesn't matter. Right, power supply on 13.8 volts, and there we go, drawing 166 milliamps. And the meter is lit, and we'll select channel 20. I'll switch picture in picture on and put the position where I want it and let's see what power it's doing it is doing 2.4 watts so the minimum acceptable on this chassis is 1.7 watts so it's already past that we've got 2.3 watts on channel 40 
add at least half a watt to what I'm telling you. 2.6 watts on channel 1. Always add half a watt to what I'm telling you uh, to take into consideration this set um, measures uh, only the fundamental and not all the interference to get it equivalent to other people's readings. So on low power on low power we have got is that 200 milliwatts to me? 200, yes, yeah, 300 milliwatts. Back to the full power and current consumption is only 620 milliamps. Wow. So I look at the frequency, but we won't probably note it down yet because it's the test gear has only been on 10 minutes. It needs 30 minutes to be accurate. I don't think that's because it's 30 years old. It, the new ones still have to be on, you know, it's a stabilisation thing with the uh, reference oscillator. So we've got 2779102. I think by the time this is warmed up it's going to be spot on. If it's any, anything above 115 I won't be touching it. Deviation. So the deviation meter on this test set can play up. So uh, we'll get an accurate reading from the test set behind me on, on the next bench back uh, but we'll just see what it is for now Walla. so it says it's 2.2 2. we're not going to be doing the VCO unless it's not working and the frequency we'll go back to that camera oh I'm, what am I doing not telling it you Yeah, we won't write that down for now. What we will do is set the signal generator to that same frequency. Right, so here comes the awkward bit. One of Alan's kindly donated crocodile clip leads onto Alan's kindly donated radio. May just need the inner. It may get its earth through the just check no it needs both it must be floating chassis right so we'll go to the cyanide meter which the pulse of gas continues to move Yeah, very sensitive. Too sensitive for its own good. So we have 3.3 .3 microvolts, not 0.33, sorry. So for 12 dB, let's put a bit more volume on. Not 0.25. And if it will do 20, which it will, and six, 0 0.62, they're incredible figures. Full volume, uh, sorry, full squelch. Let's see what that is. I'd like it to be 100 microvolts. We'll go to the attenuator so you can see that. So on 1, 3, 10, 30, it's coming at 30. So I want that to be a bit stronger than that. So at the other end, we'll turn the squelch on the radio down, we'll put the signal generator to standby at 0.3 of a microvolt, and then we'll set the squelch on the radio to threshold, switch the signal generator back on. It's coming in at 1 microvolt. A 
so um, the S meter should be S9 for 100 microvolts. It's a bit generous. It is 10 microvolts. Put it in the wrong box. On the transmit, the meter should read. Wow. Well, should read in the centre of the red zone. It reads uh, 3.5. Meter lamp's okay. Well, you know what? There's only one switch I can... I, there's two switches, aren't there? There's high-low power, that's working, and on and off switches, they're working. Potential is working. No sockets, no PA. Uh, mic apparently works. I'll just put X. Allen. Right. Let's do some kind of tune-up. So we'll start with transmit. So we start here, go down and up. We don't touch that one, which is done with the spectrum analyzer. If I feel that it has been touched, I'll have to put the spectrum analyzer on. So I say it's already doing 2.4 watts, so it's doing more than its limit spec. Well, that wasn't quite right, because I've just got a bit more out of it. That's the same. Oh, it's another point something. There's another point something. It's now at, at two and a half watts. Change glasses. Well, that was out. Three point two. I'm going to put the spectrum analyzer on. So there shouldn't be a core in there, and there isn't. onto the screen find the right camera basically we want 54 megs on this it's the second harmonic No, doesn't seem to be any any problems at all. As clean as a whistle. All right, we'll put that back on. So we're at three point four watts. So add half on to that. You'd be about three point nine on a normal power meter. Now 
Well, seven watts on the Zitagi one. <laughs> Four. Right, let's change channels. Channel 40 is 3.2. You usually find this that it's um, better towards the lower channels because it's easier to generate those frequencies. 3.5. So go back to channel 20. See what the current consumption is, it's 815 milliamps and low power is still 300 milliwatts. Right, we'll run through this receiver. Oh no, I'll tell you what, we'll do the um, meter. So the preset there is for the meter. I'm now on low power like a Wally. It's actually where it should be. It should be in the centre of the red zone regardless of what output it's doing. It was so close to that. It's probably been screwdriver downwards. Right, we'll put some volume back on. And we'll look at the... Well, we'll look at the detector first, I think. Put the oscilloscope on. Put an S9 signal on the... Signal generator, that's 100 microvolts. This is the detector. I've shown the sweep generator method shown in the service manual. We get quicker and better results using the cyanide meter. That was spot on, no intervention needed. The next one's kind of shaping. should be about there before it starts going out of shape so I've got a peak before it goes out of shape I'll just go on tune that so you can see that so where it was was down there so I've peaked it and then it goes can you see the bottom here is looping to the right as it goes out of shape so that's the maximum with the correct shape Okay, over to the cyanide meter. I've got that uh, Thunderbolt 3000 to put in my van. Uh, I've got a CTVR power supply to do, new in its box. And we've got the Midland 77104 GTL tomorrow. Well, I might start it later today. Right, turn the signal generator down. And with about 4 dB, we'll go through the front end, see whether we get any more sensitivity. So that one was absolute peak. That's peak. Over to the other tool. This is really well set up. I 
don't think we've gained anything, but we might have, you never know. So having retuned it, we've actually lost some sensitivity. It's the detector that's made all the difference. If you remember, it was out of shape. So it might have been more sensitive, but it would have been slightly garbled. So that's how it should be, therefore. 3.8 for 12 dB. For 10 dB. Three point one for twenty DB not point eight. So you can see the trade off there. It doesn't need that sensitivity. It's it's just noise floor. But we've now got this this um clarity. So while we've got that on, we'll see if we can set the meter for 100 microvolts, which is banging across. That's already at minimum, so that's what you see is what you get. It will have changed a bit. It is now... 150, what scale am I on? 30, it's 150, 15, 16, 17, 18. It's actually worse. Even more generous. Oh, good grief, I put it in the wrong box. This isn't worse, it's better. But it's not it's not exactly a hundred, is it? So we need to do the squelch. And it now is 100 microvolts. So, retuning the receivers put that right. Let's see where the sensitivity is now at the bottom. reset that because that wasn't a good result Not point nine five yeah we'll just check the frequency again It's heading in the right direction without intervention, but we'll come back to it in half an hour. And the other thing we'll come back to is deviation. I'll tell you what, we'll do that now. So I'll take it off this test set and put it onto the other test set. reads Whoa, it's very very slightly high it's 2.5 instead of 2.2 Whoa, I've made think about it has set up and save electricity and put that 
back into this one. So we'll come back to this in half an hour and we'll see what it's like then. Right, so I've come back an hour later. Let's see what the frequency is. Oh, look at that. We don't need to touch it. <laughs> this is why I say it's worth just waiting uh, that everything's come up to temperature. So the you, the trimmer is just in the right-hand corner there. So it saves me on soldering that and I'm doing it because it's spot on. So there we go. I'll just do a cold transmit test. And... 3.6 add 0.4 because our machine is uh, so it, it's coming up to 4 watts so you really can't argue over that but it's actually 3.4 plus some interference did I say that? I did 3.6 3.6 we can uh, definitely put that down there uh, 27 seven nine one two six twenty seven seven nine one two six I'm gonna just for a laugh see what this says about the deviation wow it says it's 2.5 the other machine says it's 2.2 to 2.5 so I think we're about right which is how we want it so we'll pop the speaker on Bob's your uncle So we certainly won't be able to plug our usual extension speaker in, will we? We'll have to use it on its internal one. So we'll just have a flick around the channels. See what it sounds like on this uh, mic. I said I would like to wash the cloth filter in that, but... Uh, can't do it before we do the test. And tomorrow we'll have the 77104 GTL Midland, which is in for repair. Right, pop picture in picture off. Turn some test gear off. Plug the aerial in. And... Will we be listening to all 40 channels at once? One and a Roger. Nothing on. Right, we'll park it on Mega Chippy Channel and we'll do it on the air test. So I hope you've enjoyed another Sierra Hotel One Tango Radio, which I like very much. I say all this tongue in cheek. I thank Alan for being so kind as to send us this and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.